Big week of cup football this week for you. Tomorrow night from 7, the Worthington Cup semi-final first leg, Aston Villa against Leicester City. Wednesday night from 7.30, the second leg, Tranmere Rovers against Bolton Wanderers. Both games live only on Sky Sports 2. Tonight, our top of the bill here in Glasgow is for the Commonwealth featherweight title. Patrick Mullings against Scott Harrison. And our Master of Ceremonies, John MacDonald, will call the fighters out. Gentlemen, please welcome to the ring now the challenger from Cumberslang, Scott Harrison. The homecoming for Scotland's Scott Harrison, the young featherweight carrying the hopes of the nation boxes north of the border for the first time and what a time aiming to follow in the footsteps of johnny mcgrory john o'brien and evan armstrong who is here to see him tonight aiming to become the nation's fourth commonwealth featherweight champion the stage is set for him burns knight and the haggis but scott's pre-fight meal was pasta and chicken jim what would it be like for him at the moment very tense surely yeah, of course it'll be tense. This is the, the most important night of his career. But uh, for a few years, we've been saying this young man is the best prospect in Scotland. I've been saying it several times, I believe it. Now it's time. He's produced already a wonderful result against Smith and Doom. But now this is the real tough one for him. He's in with a real tough campaigner, a real quality championship fighter. So this is a tough one for him. But I, I, I have him a slight favourite. And gentlemen, please welcome to the home of Scottish boxing, the champion from Harrow, Patrick Mullins. Here comes the champion into the lion's den. But Harrow's Patrick Mullins won't mind that. He must be one of boxing's most controversial characters of the last 12 months, not because he's Tyson-esque, but because he's been on the end of some of the strangest decisions. Most recently, when taking this vacant title from Eric Udamasi in November, no one I spoke to at ringside gave him the crown. But hey, that's the fight game. What is most assured is that he's a talented puncher who possesses eye-catching skills, Jim. Yeah, he's got the old head, uh, and uh, he, he'll, be, he'll be hoping Harrison will make mistakes. Harrison has to press this fight tonight, he has to take control of the fight if he can. In some ways that'll suit Mullings, because it'll allow him to box in the back foot, confuse him, throw through the, the flashy burst of counters. This is uh, all the ingredients of an real cracker. Very exciting contests then. The older Patrick Mullings, the youth of Scott Harrison. Slight up height advantage there for Harrison. Weight pretty much the same, and he has the reach to over Mullings. Harrison debuted in 96. Mullings has been a pro for six years now. They're 25 fights to 10. Knockout percentage slightly higher for Mullings. Gentlemen, distinguished guest of the St. Andrews Sporting Club, Tommy Gilmore proudly presents 12 rounds of boxing for the Commonwealth Featherweight Championship. Sponsored here by Highland Spring Natural Mineral Water. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us here on Sky Sports. Our matchmaker Graham Lockwood of Skipton and all the officials have been appointed by the Commonwealth Council in association with the British Boxing Board of Control here present with us at ringside. Our supervisor, Mr. Ray Clark, OBE, and our steward in charge is Dr. David Sanderson and Brian McAllister. Time to give the bell from Glasgow is Jim Russell, and referee in charge of the action. One of the leading referees in the world today from Wellingborough is John Keane. They are the officials, and here are the contestants. Firstly, and introducing to you the challenger. He's fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the black trunks and weighed in at eight stone, 13 pounds, 14 ounces. He brings a 10 fight record, eight win, three inside the scheduled distance, one loss and one draw. He comes to the ring as the current IBO Intercontinental Featherweight Champion from Cumberslang, Scotland, Scott Harrison. And across the ring comes the champion. He's wearing the black trunks and weighed in at eight stone, 13 pounds, 
10 ounces. He brings a 25 fight record, 21 wins, 10 inside the scheduled distance, four defeats. He's making the first defense of the Commonwealth Featherweight Championship. Please welcome from Harrow, the Commonwealth Featherweight Champion, Patrick Mullins. So, sports fans and Sky fans, here we go then, 12 rounds of boxing for the Commonwealth Featherweight Championship. Well, many people in boxing have been looking forward well, to this clash. These two no are like friends expected. and old Check enemies and already. They've spent countless hours together sparring and admit openly they know each other inside and out. Harrison told us it gives him the edge because he's worked out a way to exploit Munnings' weaknesses, namely his laid-back lapses, and that he never hurt him in those sessions. Munnings says he'll win because he handled Scott Harrison without trouble. He calls him one-dimensional and one-paced. Will it be the experience and power of Munnings or the fresh, calm boxing skills of Harrison? Jim. Well, Harrison has the physical advantages. He's the, he's the more natural featherweight, he's bigger, he's stronger, probably a little bit more powerful. He has to use those advantages, but he has to use them carefully. This little fellow is a fox. So Harrison is going to take some shots on the way in. He's going to have to be prepared for that. This is not going to be an easy night one way or the other. He has to be prepared mentally for that. He's going to have to take some shots. Every mistake he makes, he'll be punished for that. But he's going to have to really get a hold of this fight. He can't let this little fellow dictate the pace. First thing that I've noticed is the huge size difference. I mean, Harrison looks so full body, doesn't he? Yeah, you have a fellow coming down to featherweight and another fellow coming up from the, the weight below, the super bantam weight. Mullings is more of a super bantam weight. Uh, Harrison, a big featherweight. So he has to use those advantages, make Mullins work every round. Whether he's winning the rounds or not, Harrison has to make Mullings work every second of every round. But you that, can see already how cute Mullings is. That's what he sometimes doesn't do. That's the criticism of Patrick Mullings, that he goes to sleep. He puts these nice, fast, flashy bursts in and then just tails off the pace. And Harrison will be looking to work for every second of the three-minute rounds. Ready, catching Mullings with a nice combination. And Harrison's best performance to date it was against Smith Doom. He got on top and he stayed on top, but tonight's going to be different because there's going to be some rounds here. He's going to lose the rounds. He's going to have some tough rounds. This is going to be a test of his character. He's going to have to want to be in there. Take the good with the bad, if you like. Lovely uppercut. Patrick Mullins throws. He'll be a lot quicker than Smith Doom, who was a big featherweight. It was a good performance from Scott Harrison. He was down in the opening round and he showed a lot of guts to get up. Lord Smith of Doom in the second and outboxed and outmaneuvered. A very good fighter from Africa. He'll be aiming to stay on top of Mullings. <laughs> Mullings shouldn't be trading, should he? Well, he's picking his shots and he's doing it carefully. He's not going to win the fight without landing shots. I tell you, I think Mullings has just shown how foxy, how, how sly he is in there in the first round. Just trying to draw Harrison in. But Harrison, a good controlled first round. Not really made too many mistakes. They've already done more in this first round than Michael Aldis and Sean Anderson did in the entire 12 of the British fight we saw earlier. And that's good. Great opener. Welcome back to the St. Andrews Sporting Club here in Glasgow. There's Scott Harrison aiming for the Commonwealth featherweight title against Patrick Mullings, the champion. Well, as the round went on, Harrison get better. He made a few mistakes. Uh, Mullings was looking good in the first half of the round. It's a good first round. Quality boxing we're seeing now. Patrick Mullings on the left of your screens from Harrow in London and Scott Harrison from Camberslang up there in Scotland both in black trunks and there was controversy at the weigh-in yesterday Mullings said he was wearing black so did Harrison Harrison was told to go and change his shorts he's come back and he's wearing black so very confusing for you but Harrison has the yellow trim on his shorts the real McCoy 
and Harrison on the other side. So I think what you have in the important nights like this, Adam, most fighters are superstitious. They're their favourite shops, and uh, that's what they want to be wearing. So he's prepared there. Uh, maybe a, a slight, a, a small fine from the border control. But I mean, let's face it, it's a kind of silly rule. It's not difficult to tell who's who here, is it? I've seen him wear tartan shorts before, so who knows? Anyway, back to the action, and this is warming up. Patrick Mullings' his little skills, his quick movement, and fast shots. Scott Harrison looking to get behind his jab and slowly and calmly outwork the champion. Well, it appears that Harrison's plan is to keep Mullins working, pressurise him, controlled pressure. Not landing too many clean shots at the moment, but uh, outboxed now and again by uh, the experienced Mullins. But uh, I think he'll be quite happy. I don't think he'll mind losing a, a, a few, uh, the first three or four rounds. I don't think he'll mind that too much, as long as he's sapping some of the energy from Mullins. He was very up for this, Patrick Mullings. I think he was quite surprised that he got that decision, as we all were, to win this Commonwealth crown against Eric Udomassi, because it was the first time he'd fought at featherweight, former British super bantamweight champion, and that's where his best success seemed to be. But he said he was going to box tonight against Harrison. And he was extremely up for this because of the rounds they've sparred together. Trained separately, obviously, for this. Mullings down in London under the coaching of Dean Powell, who's been with him pretty much for all his career. Scott Harrison with his father, Peter, up at the Phoenix Gym in Glasgow. Harrison just staying right on top of Mullins as we thought he would. Hasn't landed too many punches here in the second round, but I think he'll still be quite happy with the plan. He's getting close to Mullins, and as the pace slows down slightly, he'll become more effective. He has gone 12 rounds before Scott Harrison, even though this is only his 11th contest. His stamina has looked good. So don't worry about that, even though Mullins has had five in the last year. There's the tight-knit corner of Scott Harrison, who've had so much faith in him. Peter, his dad, Billy Nelson, Joe McGuinness, Denny Mancini in there. How's he doing, Jim? Yeah, well, I, I thought uh, Mullings is oh, the first couple of just with his classier boxing, but Harrison's boxing well is getting close, which is the main thing. He's not, he's not allowing uh, Mullings to box him at long range. He's getting close, getting on top of Mullings, and he's pressurising him. So I think at this stage, I thought he's lost the first couple of rounds, just been stolen from him. But I still think he'll be reasonably happy. Back to his jab, Scott Harrison trying to pin Mullings back. His father Peter says Scott has it all, a great jab, perfect balance, every punch in the book, and he has no problems with southpaws. Should be a walk in the park. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sitting in the corner is fairly easy, although his dad uh, boxed at a fair level himself. Right hand just creeping through Mullings' guard from Harrison. And again, and that gets a round of applause from Peter in the corner. See, the good news for Scott, he's getting close to Mullings. He's backing them up, getting them on the ropes. Mullings, Mullings will have to start coming forward. Trying to get his own jab working Mullings, but it doesn't seem to have the force of Harrison. And maybe this weight thing will come into play the more we get into the contest. Surprisingly, he traded with Udomassi Mullings at times. He showed incredible bravery. That's the one thing he did do at Wembley Arena in November, although we didn't think he got the verdict. But he showed a very good chin. I think he's going to have to put more power into his shots. Uh, Harrison's just coming right through them here, just walking forward. OK, he's not having a chance to be very effective with his own work. But uh, sooner or later, Mullings is going to have to start putting a bit more snap into the shots, trying to discourage this young fellow. For so long, Mullings has operated at 8'10". Dean Powell, his trainer, says 8'12 is about the perfect weight. He came in at 8'13'10 and had to strip down to make the weight. So maybe he will weaken later on, and that might be Harrison's ploy. Yeah, but I think Harrison plans to be more effective in the second half of the fight. 
he certainly he's not worried he's not becoming frustrated that Mullins is difficult to pin down here in the first three rounds but he's not becoming frustrated I think this is exactly what they expected and as long as he's getting close getting a chance to get the punches off then I'll be quite happy I would imagine big hopes up here for Scott Harrison not much amateur experience but he lost a box office or box off for the Great British Britain spot in the Olympics. Eventually went to David Burke. He's got skills, trying to put uppercuts and jabs in together. Trying to confuse Mullings a bit now. Yeah, what, what he'll just do, he'll, he'll gradually raise the pace in every round. Just try and grind this little fellow down. The cleaner boxing and the good defensive boxing still coming from Mullings. There's the corner of Scott Harrison, the young 22-year-old from Cambuslang. See, Harrison's getting close, and I think that's the main thing. I think he would maybe thought he'd be worried about pinning this fellow down. But he's managed to pin him down a few times, and as the pace goes, he'll be hoping to become more effective. Fourth round of this cat-and-mouse chase between Patrick Mullings and Scott Harrison. Mullings' first defence of the Commonwealth featherweight title. Boxing out of the South Force stance, as always. He's had a funny career, Pat Mullings. Really made his name in a defeat against Spencer Oliver in a terrific fight for the Southern Area Super Bantamweight title. He went on a winning spree, knocking out Frankie Leroy, Hitchka, Hadrian, and Martin Krastev, among others, before coming unstuck against the South African Simon Ramoni. I don't know if he's ever really recovered stock properly from that. Certainly an older fighter now. And a couple of years ago, I thought Mullins was heading towards the world championship boxing. He was one of the hottest prospects in the country. And things seem to stall a little bit, but the talent's still there. And he's boxing well the start of the round four here. Harrison has to become more effective now. Three rounds have gone by. He's got close, but he hasn't really been effective as yet. Now Mullings is raising the pace, trying to come forward a little bit. Yes, out of range, Scott Harrison with his jab. Why do you think Mullings never did make it to world level? I don't really know. I mean, at that time, as I say, when they lost the space for Oliver, the couple of fights after that, he really looked superb. And... I mean, sometimes it can be things outside the ring, it can be problems. Uh, I just don't know, there was no reason, but his form just seemed to dip a little bit. He's had a couple of lucky verdicts that uh, most people in the hall thought he shouldn't have got. So I'm here yesterday, but he's certainly boxing well tonight. Harrison beginning to have problems pinning him down now. Getting close, but not landing decent punches. The pre-fight plan from the Mullings camp was to box and move. He's doing it rather successfully at the moment. Harrison has to raise the intensity of what's going on here. He's allowing Mullins to box at his own pace, the pace he's comfortable with. He's getting close, but he's not really pressurising now. He's going to have to take some chances and let some punches go. He's picking with the jab, trying to box his way in. But uh, the flashy bursts are coming from Mullins. That was better. See, four punches all miss. Lovely defensive boxing from the champion. Yes, correct. Punches, very technical. Not really explosive power, Scott Harrison, but he'll be trying to prise through the guard of Patrick Mullins. Wear his man down. The uppercut. Trying to sneak through Mullins. Jab and the Harrison corner are happy with their man. Our big fight series continues Tuesday evening at 10 on Sky Sports 3. This week it's Mike Tyson. Some of the early career highlights in the rise of Tyson. The fights against Bruno, Spinks and Thomas. Plus the 1986 meeting with Trevor Burbick recalled in our big fight series Tuesday evening at 10 Sky Sports 3. Fifth round here 
in Glasgow for the Commonwealth featherweight title at nine stone. Mandatory defence this for Harrow's Patrick Mullings, who's come up north of the border. He said he didn't want to, he didn't want to fight Scott Harrison here, but it was ordered. He's come up and he's confident. Boxing quite nicely, Jim. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm giving the, the, the rounds to Mullings. I mean, Harrison is putting in a lot of work here, but his punches are not accurate. <clears throat> and the defensive boxing and the nice little bursts coming from Mullins are eye catching. Rounds one and two were fairly close, could have gone either way. I just uh, thought that the cuteness of Mullings' nick comes, so I have him having a handy lead at the moment. So Harrison on my card has it all to do. Yeah, you've got him winning everything so far. But then you were saying that Harrison will come on strong later on. Yeah, but I don't think Harrison will be upset if he loses the early rounds. Keep in mind, too, a couple of close rounds, the referee could be seeing it differently from me. But he has to be more effective now. Four rounds have gone by, that's a third of the fight. It has to be more effective. It's not enough to get close. He has to get the quality punches in there. Take the play away from Mullins. Mullins is a very honest fighter. He says the people that beat him tend to be the ones that move around him. And for me, maybe Scott Harrison hasn't found that range yet. He's coming in doing pretty much the same things all, all, all since the first day of Harrison. And uh, Mullins may be feeling that he solved them out already. They've sparred several times, as you mentioned already. See, the flashy stuff again coming from Mullins. Lovely to watch at times, Patrick Mullins. Scott Harrison gets through with a little success. Mullins comes back at him. No signs of him going to sleep yet, Mullins. But how will he cope with the power of Harrison? as the fight goes on. Not really a featherweight, Mullins. Well, this is better for Harrison. It's, it's, a, it's an even enough round, but Mullins, he's forcing him to trade now. And that's what Harrison must do. He must draw Mullins into more of a fight. Don't allow him to box at his own pace. Mullins is boxing beautifully tonight. Better work again from Harrison. It's a good round, this one. Really heating up here in the St Andrews Sporting Club. Wonderful for the home fans if Scott Harrison can pull this off. First time he's ever boxed here. He's had one in Manchester, one in Hull, one in France, and seven down in London. We've seen him many times. First chance for his Scottish fans here tonight. Good, effective work from Mullins. Commonwealth featherweight title here and success in round five for Patrick Mullings there, Jim. Yes, yeah, so the other way, actually, I was more impressed with Harrison's punching, but there you go. The stats don't say it all, but what we do have is a good fight in the ring. Mullings, the southpaw from Harrow, the former British super bantamweight champion, seemed to have the world almost at his feet at one point a great triumvirate was building with Spencer Oliver and Michael Brody unfortunately Spencer Oliver cannot box again and Michael Brody's gone a different route but Mullings has picked up this Commonwealth featherweight title and he intends to keep it here Mullings smartness is giving Harrison some problems Harrison just marching straight forward a little bit too predictable maybe has to draw Mullings into more of a battle. Mullings is still boxing at the pace that he likes. Having it pretty much his own way. Wouldn't quite say that, that's an exaggeration, but he's not been pressurised enough. Harrison's going to have to do this the hard way, I think he realises that already. The fourth round was a good, sorry, the fifth round was a good round. He drew Mullings into a fight and that's what he's trying to do now. He has to stay there, there's no easy way to beat Patrick Mullins, he's been in a few wars already. He's never been found wanting in, in the heart department. So Harrison's going to have to do it the hard way, and that's what he started doing now. Good heart, good chin. Patrick Mullings. Many people thought Brian Carr beat him for the British Super Bantamweight title, and he almost gave it up against Drew Doherty. But he's tough. There's a little nick also under the eye of Scott Harrison. 
and he's been plagued with cuts before he has a loss on his record to the centurion from wales miguel matthews cut on the left eyebrow at alexandra palace back in october 97 in his fourth contest yeah, some good quality shots now. Mullings slowing down that little bit. Harrison finding the range better now. Flowing arms of Scott Harrison. More stationary target now, Mullings. speed there applause from his corner and there's that little nick just around the right eye of scott harrison doesn't look too serious and he's trying to whip in that uppercut and gets out of the corner behind his jab Good first six for Patrick Mullings, the champion here in Glasgow. But Harrison's getting closer, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's been much more effective the last couple of rounds. I mean, Mullings still looking good in little bursts, little smart little uppercuts inside, but Harrison boxing better now. Here's the seventh. Scott Harrison, the challenger, on the right of your screens in the black shorts with the yellow trim. And Patrick Mullings on the ropes from Harrow with the black shorts. Mullings, 29 years of age. This is his 26th contest. He's lost four before. Settled back down with Dean Powell. Had a little phase with Kevin Sanders up in Peterborough. Didn't work out. And uh, has returned to London. These two have sparred on many occasions. Body shot from Harrison. Good shot, says someone in the audience behind me. I think that may be a plan to go to Mullins' body, just take some of the steam out of his legs. Low-key sort of figure, Scott Harrison, who's come up quietly in the ranks. Mullins, the extrovert, car dealer from Harrow. Dean Powell calls him the Arthur Daly of boxing. Also. A radio commentator loves being around the ringside action when he's not in it. And took his chance well against Eric Udomassi. He won. Even if many people thought he shouldn't have got the verdict, he did. And he's boxing better tonight against a talented young man. Has Harrison been a bit one-paced? It has been one pace, but I think that's been part of the plan. I think it's the one to keep control. The one to keep a tight defence and keep marching forward, pin this fail against the ropes. I think that's pretty much the plan we're going into the ring with. And uh, certainly, from where I'm sitting, things have improved for Harrison as the fight has gone on. Much more effective in the last couple of rounds. And uh, he's outworking Mullings in this round. Mullings still looking good, still looking flashy, but in little bursts. But the steady work coming from the challenger here couple of points ahead there on Jim's scorecard but plenty of time for Scott Harrison to try and grind down his man began boxing when he was 15 Harrison has been around Jim's all his life sparring with Paul Weir the two-time world champion up here he sparred with Drew and Wilson Doherty in the amateurs very experienced in his Father trainer Peter has always wanted him to have a professional style. This is a good fight, Jim. This is quality boxing now, yeah. No nasty stuff, no clinches. The referee we wouldn't even I mean he could have done this from outside the ring. Not a problem. Lovely championship boxing quality. Speaking little battle here for the nine stone Commonwealth the title. Body shots landed. Harrison far more than Patrick Mullings. That's where he's getting to him. 
Yeah, but I think the fact that Mullins is counter-punching a lot, he, he's going to be more head-hunting. Uh, when you're counter-punching, there's usually more, more target uh, to the head than the rest of the body. But this is really even stuff here. Little graze, too, by the eye of Patrick Mullins, just being worked on by lead cut man Mick Williamson in his corner. Complete contrast with the last fight we had here where referee Terry O'Connor was the busiest man in the ring and referee John Keane here tonight has let the action speak. It's been good stuff. Can Mullings keep up his work rate? Will Harrison get to him eventually? We are talking about it earlier. And we were mentioning the possibility of the tortoise and the hare and the fact that Mullings might get the early rounds, but Harrison could creep back. Yeah, I think uh, Harrison's father, Peter, will be saying to him, don't worry too much if you lose the early rounds because we expect that. As long as every round you show a little bit of improvement, and on that card, that's what he's been doing. He's outworked the champion in the last three rounds on that card. Still the flashy stuff, the nice little boxing, defensive boxing coming from Mullings. But Harrison setting the pace, keep it grinding the punches out. A different preparation for Harrison up here this time, sparring with Sean Anderson and Ian McLeod. He looks in terrific shape and he obviously wants to take this big opportunity. And his 11th fight, remember, the 22-year-old. Mullings at 29. One would have thought would have the experience to deal with him. But it is getting close. And what a night for Frank Maloney, who manages both fighters. He said, a draw, he said to me beforehand, would be the result he wants. <laughs> Sounds like a good promoter manager, yeah. And I think we also have to remember, too, Mullings has had two recent 12-rounders. And that takes something out of the body. Win or lose, 12-rounders take something out of the body. Well, most fighters like a long rest after a championship battle. This is his third 12-rounder in the space of two or three months. He's had Harrison's had a rest, so maybe he'll be a little bit fresher. He's had five, Jim, since August 98. Patrick Mullings. Always been a little controversial when they get to the end of them as well. Crossed out to Michael Aldis for the vacant British Super Bantamweight title. Back in November 2, when he thought he'd done enough. He was actually going to step in for Scott Harrison to fight Udomati just a week later, but it ended up being about three weeks later when he went in and picked the title up. Harrison pulled out last time through a bout of shingles. Scott Harrison grinding out the punches, dropped his gun shield, Mullins right on the belt. Even, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, they've got a dead level now. And, uh, but uh, the important thing, uh, Harrison is the one who's improving. Mulling still looking good, looking flashy, and little bursts, but the steady work coming from the challenger. Ninth round of this quality Commonwealth featherweight title champion, Patrick Mullings, on the right of your screens. And he has it dead level. This is my colleague Jim Watt. But. We don't know what's happening. And the minds of the officials. I just feel Harrison has been outworking the Mullings in the, in the last few rounds. A steady pace. Mullings is looking good in a little burst, but not sustaining it. John Keane would have had time to just to sit back and watch this. And he's the guide to who wins the title here tonight. Scott Harrison aiming to become the fourth Scott to hold the Commonwealth belt. It will be his biggest win and a big night for him. Is Mullings just going off the pace a little? Yep, I think this is the plan. And the important thing, as I say, Harrison is the one whose boxing is improving. The body shots are landing. He's just keeping the punches flowing. I think things are going exactly as they expected. They're definitely happy in the corner, I would say. Good uppercut there from Mullings, but Harrison was working Mullings' body, and there was just a little wince from him. As we saw earlier, he's landed many shots down to the lower area 
of Pat Mullings' body. And if he is slightly wrong at the weight, Mullings, they could pay. and who won gold in the European Juniors. Very successful Scottish ABA featherweight title at just 17. Real high hopes. He's beaten one or two good fighters already in the professional ranks like Guildford, Southport, John Matthews. And of course, Smith Adoom, that big win to give him something called the IBO Intercontinental Featherweight Crown. Never mind that. It was the performance which was impressive, thrown in, and he came out trumps with a lot of credibility that night. They're taking their time with him. Maybe the timing could be right here. Mullings trying to come forward, now stop the rot a little bit, I think. And he's walking onto the shots. Mullings, I really think, is feeling the pace now. Yes, his mouth is more open, Patrick Mullings, than it was earlier. The gum shield is showing a look of steely determination on the face of Scott Harrison as he just marches forward. And slightly more concern in the corner of Patrick Mullings. Dean Powell gets in, and I'm sure they'll be happier in the Harrison camp. Yeah, I think so. The rounds are tough, they're fairly close now. I just have Harrison outworking Mullins in, in most of all the recent rounds. Uh, Mullins has to raise the pace, he has to get a little bit more power into his shots if he to, to, to discourage his young fellow. Har Harrison threw twice as many shots in the ninth than Mullins. See, you can't expect to be catching Mullins cleanly with every shot. But the Harrison is punching through the defence, some of the punches are landing behind the ear. Some of them are partially blocked, but enough punches are getting through, and the fact that he's prepared to sustain the pace, as you can see here, just keep the punches flowing and scoring the rounds his way. From the fifth round on, well, I've given Harrison every round. But remember, Patrick Mullins has something of a habit of being in controversial fights. So, who knows what will happen. Round 10 here for the Commonwealth featherweight title. Mandatory defence. Harrow's Patrick Mullins on the left of your screen. Both of them in black trunks. Scott Harrison with the yellow trim at the bottom. Names himself the real McCoy, or whether that was a Frank Maloney nickname, who knows? But he's doing well, steadily getting to his man. Mullings has tried to raise the pace in, in the 10th round here, so we'll see, can he sustain it for the three minutes? I think that's his problem now. Trying to get a full hold here in the 10th, but already he's backing off again. When he fought Scott Harrison's compatriot Drew Doherty last year in Peterborough, Munnings just fell off the pace and, and went into really strange corners and fell asleep at times, it seemed, in there. His mind didn't seem to be right and on the job. But uh, mentally before this, he was very up for it. A buzz around their camp. But is he feeling the body shots of Scott Harrison now? I just think it's the persistence that's beginning to grind him down a little bit. Harrison has never given him a second's respite. Just keeps coming forward, staying on top of him. Making him work every minute of every round. He has not taken a step back, Scott Harrison. He's stuck to his game plan. And Mullings is now the one that has got to work this out. This is a good round. It's as though Mullings feels it's time to produce a good round because he needs one. He's been slipping slightly over the last few rounds. There's blood from the nose as well of Patrick Mullings. As Scott Harrison tries to close the distance down between them. Mullings is actually matching Harrison for work rate in this round, which he hasn't done for quite a few rounds. So I think he feels it's time to pull something out of the bag. Maybe he's seen your scorecard, Jim. 
That could be the case, but he certainly raised the pace in this round. And John Keane has to intervene for once. Lots thrown here from Patrick Mullings, but just bends backwards, and Scott Harrison saw the advantage and initiative, and he's trapped Mullings in the corner, and he's throwing shots to his head. Mullings has got a throw back. He does. He gets himself out of trouble and comes back with some flashy uppercuts of himself. Good stuff here. Ringside in Glasgow. Great round. Well, the big question... Uh, who did that round take most out of? Was it young Scott Hans, the young fresh kid, or Patrick Mullins? Well, Patrick Mullins looks tired on his stool. Those body shots whipped in there from Harrison. And then the head movement. That was a tremendous round, best round of the fight so far. And for me, Harrison is the one who will spring back from that. The 12 round, the recent 12 rounders maybe start to take their toll on Mullings here. We'll see if he has the reserves of stamina to come back from such a tough round. It was an even round on my card, but I think Harrison will have enjoyed it more. Harrison has not fought since July, so he's had a long rest and time to get ready for this. Patrick Mullings, of course, had one, two, three, four, five, six fights in 99, and at the age of 29, maybe it's starting to catch up with him. Six minutes left of this Commonwealth featherweight title match. And a cracker it's been. Terrific boxing between Scott Harrison and Patrick Mullings. Mullings starts quickly. Mullings' problem may be sustaining over the three minutes. We'll see how much uh, juice that last round has taken out of. That was the corner that Harrison had him in trouble in round 10. Can he push him back there? Mullings stands his ground. And Jim has Scott Harrison ahead by just one point. Two rounds to go, couldn't be closer really. Now this has been a tremendous battle, real quality stuff, and as I said before, the referee, we haven't even noticed him in there. And just as I say that, <laughs> thank you, ref. <laughs> you can never tell in boxing, can you? But it has absolutely been a fantastic fight, this. Surprisingly, Harrison hasn't raised the pace as I thought he would have done in this round. Maybe it's time to do that now. Lefts and rights now. Another breath from Patrick Mullings. Being caught more often here. Has to come back with body shots of his own. But Harrison, to me, Jim, looks the stronger. Yeah, physically, right, right from the off, we reckon he had the physical advantages and he's been using them. But what, what a great showing from both guys up to now. Real quality championship boxing here. Mullings using every trick in the book. Harrison just at the sheer intensity, keep coming forward at every round. Difficult man to beat, Patrick Mullings, but Scott Harrison has stuck to his game plan. Methodical, steady, effective. Both pretty tired now. This has really been a pace. They haven't stopped working. They haven't clinched. Every minute of every round they've been working. Again, Mullings tries to get his jab working. I think Harrison's feeling a little bit tired himself here. Finished strong, Pat, they're saying, in the Mullings corner. They know it's close there. Good right hand from Harrison, and Mullings just went back, but it seems to spur him on when he gets caught. He's a real little warrior, Mullings. Shows heart in every fight. One of his nicknames was the Gladiator. He has done that again. He did it against Eric Goodamassi. He's done it here tonight against Scott Harrison. But who is winning the fight? It could go down to this very last round. What's Dean Powell saying to him in the corner? What's Peter Harrison saying to Scott, his son, in that side? The boxing dinner audience here tonight loving this. Well, it's 
not that far apart on punches landed during the fight. Slightly in favour of Harrison. Do you agree, Jim? Yep, that's the way I've got it. Uh, from the, the fifth round on, Bruce Harrison raised the pace. Mullins has gone with him in bursts. That hasn't sustained. I just feel Harrison has outworked him. He's been a little bit predictable. I think he's going to have to learn some more little tricks in there. But uh, the tactics, I think they, they've got into this fight with tactics and stuck with them. Two rounds ahead, Jim has it, the unofficial card. Remember, it's up to John Keane from Wellingborough to decide who will win this Commonwealth featherweight title. Previous owners like Jim Driscoll and Azuma Nelson, now the English quartet of Colin McMillan, Billy Hardy, John Joe Irwin, Paul Ingle. Who is going to take the belt home tonight? Will it be Patrick Mullings, the champion? The rather controversial champion who didn't seem to have done enough to win it last time. Has he done enough this one? Will he get yet another very close decision or will his luck run out here in Glasgow? He needs a big last round, Jim. Well, certainly on my card he does. Yeah, he needs a knockdown in the last round. But uh, keep in mind, uh, Mark, Mark Card is unofficial. Harrison still has the strength to push him off. Look, so you can see him looking the stronger. Yet the referee, not very often got involved tonight. A couple of times in the, the later rounds when both guys are tired. Harrison again just coming forward. Nothing seems to have stopped him tonight. Determination and inner strength to the youth and the freshness as well, Adam. at 22 this has been a tremendous display from Harrison very mature and there's smiles in the corner they think their man has done enough minute and a half to go in the last he smiles himself Scott Harrison we don't normally see that well Harrison came in here tonight knowing it was going to be a hard night's work and he's gone about it with that in mind hasn't flinched he's taken shots in the way in every round's been tough but he's stuck with it None my card is going to win the fight. I don't think they'll score that knockdown. That was a sort of a, a punch landing, but it was more of a trip. No knockdown, but Patrick Mullings' gum shield comes slightly loose. He's really feeling the long, hard, grueling battle, and that's what it's been. And both boxers have done exceptionally well here in Glasgow tonight. Patrick Mullings has really wanted to keep that title. Even though super bantamweight may suit him better, he got the crown and you've got to take your breaks in boxing. But has Scott Harrison here just done the more effective work in the latter part of the fight? Well, he's done more work all the way through the fight, but it's just that there's the referee record enough clean punches were landed for him. It's not enough to do the work, you have to land the punches. On my card, he has, but uh, we shall see. Mullings looks desperate. So to his corner, the title could be slipping away from the 29-year-old from Harrow. Could it be coming home to Scotland? Could we have one out of two Scottish winners tonight? The crowd seems to think so, and so does referee John Keane. He raises Scott Harrison's arm aloft, the fourth Scottish holder of the Commonwealth featherweight title after Johnny McCrory from 36 to 38, John O'Brien in 1967, Evan Armstrong in 1974, here tonight, how happy he will be that the Commonwealth featherweight title has come to Scottish shores. North of the border, Patrick Mullings looks dejected, but he put everything into it. It was a terrific battle of wills and boxing of highest quality, Jim. Yeah, and, and I can see why Mullings is a little bit disappointed because he knows he boxed so well, his defensive boxing was beautiful, but I just feel it got outworked all the way through. Harrison never stopped working, and he's looked for the rewards. Gentlemen, distinguished guests, after 12 pulsating rounds of championship boxing, referee John Keane has scored the contest for Mullings 113 points. For Harrison, 116 points.
He's the new Commonwealth featherweight champion from Canvas Land, Scotland, the Braveheart, Scott Harrison. By three rounds, Scott Harrison wins and the Commonwealth featherweight the title and we'll be having a word with him after the break. And champion, Patrick Murray. The young prospect from Scotland becomes a champion. Scott Harrison, the new Commonwealth featherweight champion, taking the title from Patrick Mullings, a two-round winner on points, just as Jim Watts scored it, it must be said. Here's the winner with Adam Smith. Scott, your first fight in Scotland, the homecoming, and what a win for you to take home the Commonwealth belt. Well, it's good to win the Commonwealth belt in front of your, your home fans and people who support you. Here's your next extra buzz, and uh, just to win this for the crowd, you know. It was an excellent match, wasn't it? I mean, you've known each other so well, you sparred together, and it was a great fight. We sparred about 200 rounds together, you know, and we've had uh, good spars. Uh, I think we knew each other's weaknesses, we knew what we expect. Uh, it was a good fight. You seem just to keep on top of him and keep working away methodically Aye. to break him down. I feel we try to count him and move, move all the time, and uh, we just try to keep him top him, accommodation punching. What well, does it mean to you? Well, it means a world, you know. That's what I've been training for for years. I want to thank my dad, Holly, John, Brian, everybody in the team. You know, they've helped me win this belt, you know. Well done tonight, Scott. Enjoy it. Very emotional and with good reason as well. Famous Scottish boxing family. This young man might be the, the best of the, the brood in a sense. But was that his best performance so far as a professional? I think, yeah, I think so. I think it was, a, it was a terrific fight. It was a terrific win. Pat Mullins is a veteran fighter. That was his first time into the big time. And uh, a great win from him, very sort of laid back, box well, box well behind the jab. Fantastic, the boy has, Scott Harrison has a big future ahead of him.